Hey guys, it's Afomia, and today I wanted to give you a little tour of my plants. Now, I have a fair amount of plants, I would say. A lot of them I have like cuttings of some that I've propagated. I also have, I think, the most moss balls that a person is allowed to have, which currently sits at four. So let's just jump into it. This is my oldest plant. Her name is Irma. I love this plant so much. I'll insert a picture somewhere on the screen of when she was a baby. She came in this tiny little two inch pot and now she is a presence. You feel her when you walk into a room. Um, I did cut off the tops of her because they were just getting really, really leggy. And when I first got her, she was just like this stocky build, like you'll see these ones are really stocky, but I just don't get a lot of sun in my room. I have a western facing room, so I get a fair bit of sun at sunset and in the summer I get a fair bit of sun, but in the winter, just living in Washington as a whole, it's not a great place for cacti, well at least western Washington. So I did cut off the tops, and then when I cut off the tops, she was able to just look give me little babies on the sides and then this giant little baby <laughs> i don't know what's going on with this i don't know what happened um i think this one is trying to follow in its lead so i'm confused by her i've had her for about two to three years i'll put the correct age somewhere and she's grown quite a bit this is a giant mug like i it's about the size of my hand and i love the idea of plants and mugs because it's just oh, she is a flamingo and i love her because she is a true cacti i don't water her that much in the winter i never go beyond a month in the summer depending on how she feels i water her maybe once a month maybe once every three weeks depending on how much sun and heat um she's getting i did just water her so the soil is wet it's been about a week since i've watered her but yeah this is irma she sits right by the window so she gets a lot of light or as much light as i can provide for her she does not like humidity she does not like wetness once again cacti think of arizona so yeah this is irma me and irma just two ladies about the town next if we're going in the order of when I got them. This beast of a plant is Hosanna. Hosanna is an Easter cacti. So she, which is, she's technically a succulent, but I think she's called an Easter cactus. Uh, but she blooms in Easter. She has not bloomed since I've gotten her, which I feel is truly rude because I care for you. I help you live. I like look how many of them have propagated. Like this is one giant stalk that's just growing. And then a lot of these are just like babies that I was able to cut. Like just tear this off right at the node, and then just plop it in soil, or plop it in water. What I feel like I'm saying plop weirdly in water, and she gives you these beautiful babies. When I first got her, she was so small. She was just like two two leaves just like this one and this one just two like so two on this one two on the other one it was just like the tiniest tiniest little thing and she has really thrived she's being a little petty because she's not blooming but she's really thrived and i and i'm really proud of her i really love her um same thing with the cacti she does not like to be over water she does not like wet roots she does not like humidity but she does like a lot of sun. Apparently I'm not giving her enough sun, but she's doing great. I water her um, in the summer every two weeks. Every three weeks is safe. I would water her every three weeks. In the winter, I stick to every three weeks. But instead of just like on a timer, what I like to do is I look at the base leaves, but if they start like shivering up, sh how do you say it? If they start like, looking very calloused 
um, then I give her water or I just feel the soil like two inches below or one inch so like a knuckle and if that's dry I water her but now that she's in a mug also all of my mugs have draining holes by the way they're not just sitting <laughs> in a closed container um, I did drill them so everything is being drained but yeah this is Hosanna my Easter cactus I named her Hosanna because uh, she blooms like in the week of Easter and um, in Ethiopia the week before Easter we have a holiday called Hosanna Hosanna all right we're talking about the OGs now we have this guy in this beautiful cup um, this is Leo or Spidey I I call him both I don't know why but um, he is my donkey's tail do you see do you see this one just dangling around that's because they're very fragile but if you pull them off you can just plop them back in the soil and hopefully they will propagate and give you new leaves um, this one is doing great this one is doing great in fact it has three heads now you see and this one we we went we had to have a conversation I don't know what happened here if you know please comment down below like what in the world happened here uh, just like right here here I know what happens because I accidentally brush it all the time uh, but like I don't, I'm so scared of touching it but it's giving me new babies do you see that's how it blooms it comes in the flower oh here you have a perfect example it does that and then it slowly grows this one I accidentally cut off the top on accident but look it has tiny new beginnings and that's very exciting I some people have giant giant dog donkey's tail and I just how do you repot that or are you just willing to lose everything like when I repotted this because I do have a fair bit of space between the stem I just plopped it out this also does have a drainage hole this is a cactus so you want to really make sure you're not overwatering it. I water this and Hosanna on the same schedule. So they, they're like brother and sister. I keep them the same one. So this one's about every three weeks as well. Um, it likes a lot of sun or as much sun as I can give it. Does not like humidity. It's just a classic cactus. Sorry, I succulent. It's pretty easy to take care of it. Um, if you're not an idiot, like sometimes I am, but look how precious this, can you see that? This little new baby life is oh, so cute. Okay, so now that we've gone through the OG3, let's move on to the newer babies. This is a baby rubber, I believe. <laughs> I'm not actually sure. I, I believe my friend got it for me for Christmas and this leaf is a new leaf this leaf so it's growing pretty fast i was really worried about it because i typically i've just realized i do better with succulents and cacti i don't really do well with thin leafed um plants as we will soon learn there's actually a candle holder uh, that i used and they cleaned and then i just plopped this little baby in here with drainage and it's so cute i have heard that it doesn't like a lot of sun because it can easily be um, sunburned because of its light pattern but it sits with my other cacti and it's doing fine but if you feel the leaves are thicker which means it just holds more water and it can honestly this can really withstand a drought because there have been times where I just haven't watered it for maybe a month and it's just okay so this can this baby can really withstand a lot all right this is the big mama i love this plant it is a beautiful plant i have the dark green variegation with the red underside this comes in a, like in a lot of color choice a lot all the color choices are green but i think there's a red option too but it has like water markings and stuff like that it's really pretty i really like the green 
I've had this for, I think since the winter. So about six months now. This is my second go at a rubber tree. My first go had died because it had some, um, like some insects in it. I think the place I got it from wasn't that dependable. That's a whole other topic. Where you get your plants from really matters. The reason I have gnats is because I got my plants from from a plant shop in Seattle that had gnats. And then now I have gnats. Just be careful about where you buy your plants. But this is a really great rubber tree. I haven't had any problems with it. I forgot where my friend bought it for me because I was so sad the other one had to go. But it's beautiful. The leaves are giant. This is here. This is the size of my hand. And it's just, it keeps giving me babies. It's really happy right now. It was semi dormant in the winter, but at the moment it's really happy. It's actually like a collection of a lot of plants. And remember the uh, Moroccan tea set? This is the bottom. How pretty is it? But I really like this because then it gives a little pedestal. Let's talk about my spider. Let's just take it out because this is one of the few I have that's actually still in the planting container. But of course it has a dog here. But this is what this looks like. Um, I did just recently water, which is why the soil, if you'll see, is really wet. I believe it's actually two snake leaves. Sorry, two snake plants. Do you see the separation? So if I wanted to, I could just separate them and have two. The way this gives you babies is it does this. It has little tiny ones and you can just cut it right there and pop it in water. Maybe not now because I think it's a bit more mature. And then you can have roots that way. Or you can just plant it in soil and it's such an easy plant to take care of. This is my first one. So I haven't ran into any problems with it but I water it very sporadically. Once again every three weeks is about when I do it. I've had trouble in the past with overwatering, so now I'm scared to do that. So now I underwater, if anything. I mean, it's better to underwater than overwater is what I like to say. I don't know how accurate that is. But um, it did give me another baby. This is its second baby, and you'll see where that baby went soon. But I really like it. Oh, here, you can see how much I bought it for. I bought it for $8.99. I think it was on sale, so I think I bought it for like $6, actually. But yeah, a snake. It likes i think can handle a variety of light situations and water situations and humidity situations so this is a pretty easy handy dandy plant to have um i know my friend had it when she worked in an office and it did great there also so it could be a really good office plant for you i do because of snake and spider i keep calling this a spider plant which is very wrong because this looks nothing like a snake plant this is a spider plant because of the spider legs All right, now we have the big mama. This is my pothos. Guess which side faces the sun? You'll never guess. But it is this big plant in a white pot. You always see it. It sits <laughs> right there. And it's great. Now, if you're wondering why it has sand on it, it's because this little fella and I have been having a fight to the death it seems like because the gnats have somehow been infiltrated and they refuse to leave so i put maybe six cups of sand on top but now they're like it's just it's a whole thing i'll make another video about it but um this is my pothos it's really pretty and it's really easy it can really handle all life situations all life situations all water situations um when it needs water all the leaves just go and you can really see it you can hear this is my favorite part when it gives you a new leaf how precious is that it's just so fun i've had this plan for maybe a year and a half yeah and it's easy um, I am angry at it because of the gnats, so it's hard to feel emotions towards it at the moment. But in general, I love it. I really love 
the swipe pot which originally had um, canned tomatoes in it and I painted it with three coats of white paint and now it looks like this and I really like it. And now here's my Pelia. Now you guys will already be familiar with this plant since I did just do a, um, a terrarium with this. Since then We've had to have a couple conversations, this plant and I. I think it's because I just forgot to water it that it just decided that it no longer wanted to live. But just all the leaves were drooping and it's just, especially the bottom leaves, just were not doing very well. And this side of it just looks very bare because I, it just never sees any sun, I don't think. You can even see where the leaves are turning because I always face this side near the window. But it's fine, this is actually my second Pelia. The first Pelia did not last very long. It died pretty quickly. And I do have to say, I think because I overwatered it, which is why I'm being so cautious with watering this one, which is, I think, coming to my demise. But it just didn't, it did not work. And I honestly, I don't know, maybe this house will be a Pelia free house because they just don't seem to like me. As for watering, I'm still figuring it out. I do know that people say just water when the soil is dry, so stick with that. Um, I will say really just make sure when you water when the soil is dry and don't wait too long because these do have, these have like thick leaves but not as thick of leaves so like they need a little support. I, I don't know what happened here and I don't know what's happening here with the yellowing. But that's, the top looks great. Let's just focus on the top. The new babies look great. Oh, this is this. Speaking of the Pelia, let's discuss how my Pelia terrarium is going. In a word, amazing. That's how it's going. I know you can't see because of the condensation, but the Pelias are still alive. The two babies are still alive. And they are rooting here. I wouldn't normally do this, but I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna open it and take one out. Oh, I can't, they've, look, they've, like, they've rooted. That's so exciting. Yay, so they obviously they like humidity. I am thinking about putting um, a bowl full of pebbles and water beneath the big Pelia just to help it survive more. It obviously can handle a lot of humidity. So I don't know, I think I'm gonna do that. Speaking of terrariums, here's my first terrarium. At, I'm sure you've seen this before. This is where the baby snake went, the first one. And honestly, it's not dead. It's been over, I think two months, so it's doing great. The other plant I have in here is called a nerve plant. It's like a phytonia something something. And I, I don't know. This side is doing really well. This side? I don't know what's happening. Actually, I think it's just like, I think it's getting too much sun and it's burning, but it's like, it's grown a lot. The lady who um, helped me pick out this plant for a terrarium assured me, assured me that nerve plants are slow growing plants. And maybe they are. <laughs> and maybe I've just given it a really good system. But this fella is not a slow growing fella. Like it was tiny. I'll, I'll insert the picture when I first made it. It was tiny and now it's basically all the way up. Tiny, like it's it's one plant. Like the start of it is right behind the snake. It's, you can't see it. Okay, maybe can you see it here? It's like, that's the, like, that's the beginning of it. It's just, it grew into a U and both of the U's are reaching the top. This, mm -hmm. this is a Moroccan tea or coffee um, mug. I got from a thrift store and I just, I loved it. It came from the set. You'll see the other, the bottom half of it later. But I loved it so much and I knew I wanted to do something with plants in it. 
And so I waited for three years and finally it came to me. Moss balls. These are, it's actually two moss balls. I just tore this one. I'm hoping it will um, uh, become a sear eventually. You do have to like do this so they it retains its spherical shape. I have a lot of sand in the bottom and a lot of charcoal because it's a paint to clean. And I have my giant um, crystals in there just for aesthetical purposes. <laughs> and I love it so much. I think it's precious. I think it's really cute. It's also really heavy. If this was a bit bigger, I would 100% put fish in there. I would also open this up because I'm not, I'm not the devil. But I really like it. It makes me really happy because there's just there was nothing else I could have put in here, so I'm glad it was this. Still on topic of moss balls. Here's my other moss ball. Isn't this the tiniest, cutest little moss ball scenario you've ever seen? I got this for Christmas. My friend and I went and built moss balls and it was such a fun experience. And when you open it, there, oh, I think it needs a little bit more water. You're gonna see me take care of my plants firsthand. So it has a water and then a white crystal rock. I don't know, it was sold to me as a crystal, but I'm pretty sure it's just a rock painted white with red sand and charcoal just for water purification and it's so tiny and it's so precious and it makes me so happy. It's just a tiny little baby doing tiny little baby things. These are my three spider cuttings. Um, these are my three snake cuttings. I am just, I took them from the snake plants we have downstairs. I'm just waiting for the bottom to callus up all the way so I can put it in water without it taking up too much water and just becoming a mushy mess. I already have the water prepared. It's this, it's just regular tap water but it has activated carbon in the bottom. I have found that this just helps me keep the water so much cleaner. And I just will plop these in here when I feel like it's time. So maybe in about another couple days. I stole a little cutting from a snake plant. And then, oh, why did I open it? Let me show you. And then I put it in this. Dun, dun, dun. I got this. It doesn't look like a science experiment. From a, a store in Ballard. That just sells funky stuff. And I loved it. And I got it specifically for plants because I wanted something to keep the humidity in it. So you just take it off. And then when you pick it up because it's still a cutting look, it gave me a little baby. Can you see that? Here, let me put this down. Ah, how precious. And it's funny because this is like well, my third attempt at a snake. The first time I overwatered it and it kapoofed. But it's so funny because this, this cutting is sitting in a very solidly moist environment full of sand and soil that's con cons that's consistently humid. But it's doing very well. It did take forever to give me that baby. I think it took about six months before it uh, propagated, but now it's propagating and doing great things. So I just like to cover it so it keeps the moisture in, but not too much moisture. And then we keep it moving. But don't close this too tightly, otherwise it's impossible to get out. Alright, that is it for my plants tour. These are all of my plants. There are a couple plants. There are a handful. There, there's a lot of plants I have killed. So I'll do a video soon about the plants I've killed and yikes but i have learned from killing them such as snake plants money plants african violets which is i feel bad about because i'm an african so i feel like that i should have had the manual for that one i hope you like this video please let me know if you have any comments or questions and i will definitely um have a video up soon about how i care for them and how i keep the pests away especially now with the warmer months like pests are gonna be more of a problem so yeah I look forward to seeing you then. Bye-bye.